This is Darren with RebootCongress.blogspot.com. I'm here today with part one of my two-part interview with Edward Krim. Earlier this week, Krim registered to run in Missouri's 3rd Congressional District as a Democrat. He will be facing Congressman Russ Carnahan in the August 3rd primary. Here's where my interview started. Well, I'm a private kind of individual. I, as a photographer, I, I relate to people, I, I like people, but I like my, what can I say? Uh, I like living as a private citizen. I have not really had an interest in, in politics in the past other than the general interest. In September of 2008, after becoming increasingly dissatisfied with President Bush's performance in office, I woke up one day to find George Bush in bed with Nancy Pelosi and Barney Frank. I emailed my congressman and uh, told him my very strong feelings in a very few w polite words about the whole idea of bailing out the rich. And he wrote me back and told me that these people were too big to fail. And I felt like he'd just spit in my eye. You know how that is? Somebody tells you something like, well, you can't really understand this. He didn't use those words, but that was the tone. Because you're an average citizen. But I, as your congressman, can tell you that these people are too important to allow to fail. And the clear implication of a statement of that sort is you're not. Krim's political campaign would have to wait because he already had plans for 2009. I asked him about those plans. Last year, in 2009, and this is something I'd been planning, thinking about uh, for about a year and a half before that, and then planning for about six months before it actually started. I went every single day of the year to Forest Park. Now, truth in advertising, somebody insisted that I do an out-of-town job, a large conference, 5,500 screaming junior and high school kids in Nashville, Tennessee. And that, that was pretty interesting. So I was out of town for six days and my children took over. One of the things I did was I produced a postcard for every month. This is uh, January's postcard, and that is Bonfire at the Skating Rink, Steinberg Rink, next to King's Highway. So I was out every single day uh, meeting people, looking at, just looking to see what I would find. You can see it all online at forestpark365.com. Krim remarked that the tarp bailout was the primary motivation behind his decision to seek congressional office. I started examining the record of, our, of Russ Carnahan, our current congressman. What have you found in that record? Not much. I went to hear him last year at his State of the District address. Uh, we went down to, I drove with a friend down to Festus, and Mr. Carnahan bragged about all the things that the Democrats were doing in Congress and how much more they were going to do he mentioned the Lilly Ledbetter Act. The other thing Russ bragged about was that he had been allowed to co-sponsor a bill. I thought to brag about co-sponsoring a bill, it wasn't even a particularly important bill as far as I could tell. It just didn't seem like a whole lot. He talked about what the Democratic Party was doing, but what he failed to talk about was what he, Russ Carnahan, was doing for the people of the 3rd Missouri Congressional District. I want a relational congressman. I want a congressman who, when I show up at a meeting, is going to make sure he shakes the hand of every single person there and said, gives them a card and says, I'm your congressman, you can contact me here, and I'm listening. I think politics is all about relationship. We see that in what happened in Massachusetts just two days ago. Now that, in my opinion, should give the Democrats real, a little bit of trembling. Because there's entirely the possibility that Ed Martin will connect with the voters in a way that Russ Carnahan's not willing to. Edward Krim had sharp words for Congressman Carnahan and his vote for the bank bailout. We know that you voted for the No Banker Left Behind Act. 
And as a result of that, we can thank you for the fact that there are no bankers showing up at the homeless shelter where I work on Monday nights. Now, for years, the left has been saying, we've got a runaway consumer economy. And frankly, I agree with that. And the right has been saying, we need to let market forces act. And I agree with that, too. So what happened with TARP is the left and the right colluded to violate their principles. And when bankers come before Congress and say, well, we thought prices on property would always just continue to go up and they'd never come down, I think to myself, I thought they were going to come down. We learned this in high school, in economics class. There's always a limit to what people can pay. And as prices goes up, go up, demand goes down, and then prices adjust. When speaking about our growing debt, Krim had this to say. What concerns me is that the federal government's irresponsible actions undermine all other aspects of American society. We're on a runaway train. Train's doing 60 miles an hour down the track. Five miles ahead, the bridge is washed out. Unfortunately, the engineer thinks he can jump that bridge. And the rest of us are back in the dining car arguing over who's going to be served next. I asked Krim about campaign promises and was impressed with his response. Here it is. One of the resolutions I have made about campaigning is I'm going to very, very carefully consider any promises I make. I don't want to say anything that I can't live up to. Promise made is has to be kept. So there are two criteria. It has to be within my ability to keep, and it has to be something that I agree with and believe in and am willing to keep. You can find out more about Edward Krim and volunteer for his campaign at edwardkrimforcongress.com. I'll have more of my interview with Edward Krim in a future video. For now, this is Darren with RebootCongress.blogspot.com.